What's going on guys, it's Cliffy here. Today we are playing in the second 2020 International against the West Indies. We won game one, I will leave a card in the top right hand corner of this video. Make sure you go and check that one out if you haven't seen it already. Now we are into, as I said, game number two. Um, we've actually gone in with an unchanged side, which is a little bit strange because... With the way the team performed in the last game, I would have really liked to have made some changes. But really, um, the players that are sitting on the bench at me for the moment, uh, basically the 12th to 15th men, are all really out of form, which is a real shame. Because um, we still want to make sure that we can obviously pick up the victory in this 2020 series. We won the Test Series, drew the One Day Series in this tour. Um, so definitely need to win the T20 Series just to keep things going, keep things alive. And just... I don't know, we just, I think we just need it just for, for our own good. We're going to scamper through here. Luckily, Guptal does manage to get back, because uh, we really could not afford to lose him. Hopefully, Latham can go and get some runs for us here today as well, because he's had, you know, a very good test series um, in the one days in the 2020s. Hasn't really had that much of an impact. He's been good behind the stumps, but with the bat, he has struggled a little bit. So it'll be hard for him... Uh, really, I guess, to keep his place if he's not going and making those runs at the top of the order as well. We may need to rejink things around, which isn't the worst thing in the world because with the form of Corey Anderson, um, it is quite easy to go and slot some players down and bring in a wicketkeeper, bring in someone like a BJ Watling or a Tom Blundell. Um, even Glenn Phillips is a guy who I took to the Champions Trophy could possibly look at bringing him in uh, to open the innings as well. And this probably would have been a, a perfect situation to look at going and doing that, to be fair, um, against a West Indies side that, you know, New Zealand should beat. This New Zealand team should beat them. Um, so it could have been a good opportunity to go and do that. But just want to go and rebuild confidence in this side. You know, a one-day series, again, that really we should have won, um, that we did end up drawing. I mean, we drew it 2-2. In theory, we really should have won that series, like, maybe... 3-1, 4-1 kind of thing. Like, I think we probably would have lost one game um, along the way somewhere. That normally happens in a five-game series. But, um, yeah, to draw it 2-2 against the West Indies, especially a West Indies side um, that does have a lot of new players in there and are away from home. It would be a different story if it was in the Caribbean, if it was in the Windies. Um, but it's not. It's here. It's in New Zealand. We really should be going and racking up those runs at a good rate. So we 10 overs through, 77 runs on the board, no wickets down, um, which is basically perfect for us because our team is essentially based around hitters, it must be said. So probably going to look at changing the order a little bit here today as well. Kane Williamson, I don't want to say as unfit. Sorry. I don't want to say he's unfit, um, but he is... He's played a lot of cricket, really, over the last couple of months. So, um, I was, again, I was looking to go and possibly take him out of the side um, and give someone else a run, but just couldn't really do that because there's no one on the bench that really deserves, I guess, that spot. And there's a misfield that has actually gone and brought up 50 for Guptill as well. So, he has got their 53 of 43 deliveries. And this is now the time, um, really, that I expect the guys to go and put out a very big score. I mean, 77 off the first 10 overs is not terrible, but now is where we need to launch, is when we need to accelerate and get up towards, you know, that 160, 170, even 180. And I mean, with Guptill and Latham in, these are the guys that can get the job done. Corey Anderson to come, um, Ross Taylor, Tom Bruce can give it a good whack too. I might even promote him up to number three to give him a chance to have a go. But there's four overs left to go. We should really in theory, just be swinging at everything. Otherwise, we are going to get probably a slightly below par total, it must be said. And there has been a lot of singles in this innings, um, which has been a bit of a concern. We do get the all-time record for partnerships against the West Indies. And uh, surprisingly, Tom Latham has actually gone and overtaken uh, Guptill in the run score. So it shows how many balls he has faced um, in this innings. And it is just a shame that one of them couldn't really go and accelerate on um, and go and get that big ton. Which, you know, 148 in these conditions, overhead conditions, isn't too bad. But really, we should be getting a lot more than that. Especially considering that we are only... Well, we didn't lose a wicket in the game. So, we've left ourselves about 7.5 and over left to defend. Which, I think in this situation, we will feel pretty comfortable. Especially with the overhead conditions the way that they are. The ball, hopefully, is going to be a bit susceptible to swing. Um, and see movement off the pitch. 
But we are going to need some early wickets, otherwise we could be looking at the same thing that happened in the one-day series. Uh, we could have a tied series, which is not what we want. We wanted to win all three when the Wendy's came to our shore, and that is what we are going to look to try and do. But Chris Gale seems as though he has other ideas, and we do need a breakthrough. We need one pretty quick, smart, and we may get it. Oh, we get it in the form of the run out. It's not Chris Gale, but it is Braithwaite, who has gone for 18 off 11. And to be fair, I will take that in that situation. I will take it. We were, I, again, I don't want to say we're struggling, because I don't think we're struggling that much, but we're just not getting the wickets. The, uh, things just aren't quite clicking at the moment for this New Zealand side. We're getting the wins against this West Indies side, but if we came up against someone like an Australia, a South Africa, an India at the moment, I think we would struggle to pick up the victories, because things just aren't all quite clicking into place at the moment. Milne has gone. Hopefully he can come in and uh, pick up... Well, he is going to pick up the pace, literally, because he bowls 150 clicks. But um, hopefully he can come in and he can up the ante with the bowling. Hopefully the fielders can do the same. And we could possibly... So we've got our second run out. So we're fielding well. The bowling just isn't quite backing it up at the moment. And Milne is uh, actually bowling his third over on the trot, which is a little bit strange. Possibly a guy I should look to save until the end of the innings. Um, but Corey Anderson, we're going to keep bowling him through because he was expensive in the last game. He has come back very well in this one and is bowling absolutely outstandingly. And as I said, that swing and seam is getting the job done at the moment. And Anderson, would you believe it, three wickets in the over. He is now actually on a hat-trick. And he doesn't quite manage to get there. I'm going to keep going with Milne um, just to bowl him out because I don't think the Windies are going to be hanging around for much longer in this game. I think it is going to be over probably sooner rather than later, especially the way that Corey Anderson is bowling. He's got one over to pick up one wicket for his five-wicket bag. And uh, I'm not sure if he's actually... Oh, I was going to say going to get there. Should have had the first slip in. Uh, but that is still his spell done and dusted. So he is finished... 4 for 13 off his 4 overs. Adam Milne, 2 for 25. And uh, I'm not sure really. I'm going to bring back Ben Wheeler and possibly Tim Southey because I'm, I have a feeling as though we won't really require Mitchell Santner and de Gronholm here today. I could be wrong, but Wheeler's gone and picked up his first, so he has bowled exceptionally well. We'll bring back Southey because, as I said, I can't imagine this game lasting the distance, but... It's not going to come back and backfire on me, I feel, because we do manage to get the job done. We bowl West Indies out for 74. We win by 74 runs, so they only get half of our score. And basically, the West Indies have only just beaten out Martin Guptill by one run. So, outstanding from Corey Anderson. 4 for 13 for him. Ben Wheeler came back after getting a bit of tap in that first game. And uh, overall, you have to say that we will be pretty happy with this series against the West Indies. So we won the Test Series 3 to nothing, drew the One Day Series 2-2, and then we win the 2020 Series 2 to nothing. And I think we are actually off. Sorry, we're not off. We are hosting Pakistan next. So that is going to be a good test. Um, really do need things to click, I feel as though. Otherwise, we could be looking at something quite difficult. You know, it could be... Um, Pakistan are going to put us under a lot more pressure, I think, than the Windies in this tour. But if you guys are excited for the Pakistanis to come to our shore, make sure you let me know down below in the comments. Smash that like button. Give this video a thumbs up. If you are new, please do subscribe. Social media links can be found down below in the description. If you do want to have a chat, definitely go and hit me up down there. And until next time, guys, ka kite anoa. See you soon.